That brings us back to the womb again. So here we are within a few hours after conception in the womb. That original zygote that has formed us is, uh, is just a little amorphous clump of cells. It's, you know, remember that cell di division slide. Within a week or so, that little patch of shapeless goo now all of a sudden begins to form the first thing in us that has any shape at all. It's something called the embryonic disc. Now don't let these terms throw you off. I'm going to throw a couple of terms at you, but remember they're just words. Scientists like to use big words because they make, think it makes them sound smarter. So we won't get stuck in them at all. By week three, what happens is that that embryonic disc has now spun out into three more layers. We're separating. Identical something spinning off, huh? It creates an outside layer, an inside layer, and a middle layer. We call them the germ layers. Germ like wheat germ, not like an invader. Germ meaning core. Everything in our body now, everything in your body and mine, came from one of those three layers. Scientists call those three layers ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Don't let the terms throw you. It just means outside layer, inside layer, and middle layer. That's all. All right, so there we are in the womb. We've just come together. The union of a loving mother and a loving father. At least hopefully so. And from these two separate entities has come unity. But not for long, because already, minutes after our conception, we've already developed an insatiable desire to separate, to individuate. And so right away, our cells began doing just that. These cells, they start to push and pull. They start to pulse and divide. They start to expand and, and give in. They form pouches and bags and spaces. All the things we create and all the things we collapse, they start building holes. Huh. We talked about atoms starting out as just big bags of nothing, and now we're creating big bags of nothing again. They start creating cavities. A thoracic cavity, that's our chest, and an abdominal cavity. What's a cavity? Well, it's a hole. It's a nothing. Our body desires to create nothingness. It longs to separate, create space, to expand. We even say things like, I need my space, respect my space. We look for it. But those external forces are always around. And they like to compress things. They like to pull things down. Sometimes they like to pull things apart. And so if we fight them, they will pull us down and pull us apart. But only if we fight them. But let's not digress. Let's stay here in the womb, positively here in the womb. We are at the beginning of a wonderful life. We are beginning a life of growth and expansion. And we're specializing. We're developing arms that know they're not legs, eyes that aren't trying to hear. We've got things going where they ought to go. But negatively, we're doing something else. We are inaugurating the kingdom of self, the kingdom of me. We are defining myself as not you. And by the way, I come first. All of that is going on in our intellect. Our intellect orchestrates and monitors the whole project, the whole process. All right, that brings us to the body intellect. So, from time immemorial, smart scientists, they've studied the human brain. They've wanted to understand it. It's a good thing to understand, huh? They've wanted to understand intelligence, intellect, reason, thought, memory, recall, all those things that you and I were brought up believing were brain functions. It wasn't until the late 20th century, however, that they began to actually isolate the compounds, the, the nerve endings, the gizmos and the wires and the bells and the whistles that actually do these things, that actually give us these qualities. Well, good for them. It's an accomplishment to do that. And the late 70s were not very long ago. At that time, some even smarter scientists began to suspect and postulate the existence of something that they started calling receptor sites. And they believed that the interaction between these receptor sites and some things called neurotransmitters, remember these are just words, don't let them throw you, that they, something in that interaction provided a physiological basis for emotion, feeling, spirit, things like that, and intellect. So it was the physical basis for non-physical things. The physical understanding of invisible internal forces. 
It wasn't until the 70s that these things were proven, later in the 70s. And all of these brain functions began, just began, to be understood. But do you know what else they found? They found that those receptor sites and those neurotransmitters, all those things, they weren't in your brain. They were everywhere. They were in every cell of your body. And that was revolutionary. Because you know what it means? It means your toenails think and your bones have reason and your muscles have logic and your nerves have thought processes. Everything, everything has as much intellect as everything. All of these things that we always attributed to brain functions, they're everywhere. They permeate every single atom of you. How? Well, remember our slide? They were stamped out of the same mold when the layers separated in the first place. And now we're starting to see how. This was all so new and so revolutionary, except for the fact that old yogis and mystics knew it thousands of years ago. What else is permeating you that, that has a physical manifestation? Well, how, try these out. Love, peace, loyalty, anger, happiness, depression. How many of those things do you get to a pound? You can't see them. They're invisible. But they're there. They're right in there. Let's bring up our slide of dividing cells again, and you'll see how everything in one place is going to another place. You see that? It's all nothing. It's all holes, energy, spirit, invisible things that are very real, all permeating those identical bags of nothing that make up 99.999% of you. And they're all building you right now. All right, let's come back up here. That body intellect. It's that simple. That body intellect is everything. But, as we're seeing, it's nothing. So, it's all very weighty, huh? What does it mean? What does it mean in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, it means something big. It means that once upon a time, our brain was connected to our stomach. And so some people, when they get really, really nervous, or when they really mess something up, they get nauseous. It means our brain was once connected to our intestines. And so some people, when they get under great, great stress, they get diarrhea. It means that our brain was once connected to our hearts. And so some people, when we get anxious, we get panic attacks, we get chest pains, we get shortness of breath, and breath is life. Oh my goodness. In some of us, that brain was connected to breast tissue that wouldn't even appear on the scene till 12 years after they were born. And, and yet it's there, it's latent in the derm layers. And so one day after a lack of sacrifice, doctors start finding tumors and lumps. In others of us, that brain was connected to the prostate. And after years of, of getting along with the boss and macho pressure and sexual frustrations, that prostate swells up to the size of a rutabaga and those guys can't sleep for more than two hours at a time without having to get up to go to the bathroom. It's like bubbles in the bottom of a glass of soda. They're nothing. They're invisible nothings that get stuck in a very real matrix. They're nothing. But as long as they trap there, they're something. And they're something big. That's what that body intellect means. So how can we live like that? That's not a very good story, is it? How can we be that unhealthy and that unhappy for so long? Well, so many of us do live like that. And so many of us are that way. We just accept it because we're unaware, and because we're unaware, we think that it's random. We think that it's chance. It comes to us from the outside. It's all we get. But it's not from the outside. These things are manifestations of our thought. They're manifestations of our internal forces. Our brain is clever, and it knows how to look tough. It knows how to appear tough. So where do those things manifest? They manifest in our weak links, in those Achilles heels we talked about in previous shows. And when they do, it wreaks havoc on our bodies. It wreaks havoc on those internal forces. And that combines with those external forces. And we fall down. And we fall apart. But you did it to yourself. That's the important thing. There's no one else to blame.